whether it was appearing on fashion spreads, rubbing shoulders with the top celebrities, or marrying the heir to one of Hong Kong's biggest restaurant chains, socialite and model Abby Choi seemingly had the perfect life. So how did it all go so tragically wrong? How did this once glamorous daughter-in-law of the Tam Dai soup noodle family end up literally being found in a pot of soup herself? Hey professors, so today we're finally going to be talking about a story from my home city of Hong Kong. Though sadly, it isn't exactly for the best reasons because in this video, we're actually going to be discussing the horrific murder and dismemberment of model and socialite Abby Choi. This has to be one of the most gruesome cases that has ever come out of the Hong Kong entertainment industry. And as a matter of fact, I think it's probably one of the most disgusting cases I've ever heard of. So it's no surprise that it has been sending shockwaves across the entire world. Now bear in mind, this case is currently still under investigation, so new details might emerge. But in this video, we're going to cover everything we know so far about this tragic murder. Okay, but first off, who is Abby Choi? Well, Abby was born in 1994 to a wealthy family that owned construction businesses in China. She originally debuted as a socialite and influencer and quickly made a name for herself amongst fashion circles thanks to her great sense of style. She would attend fashion events worldwide, became friends with many of the top celebrities, and even appeared in several high fashion magazines like Elle, Vogue, and Harper's Bazaar. Additionally, she she also owned vast estates and lands, which gave her a total net worth of around 12 to 13 million dollars. So essentially, Abby was rich, beautiful, and famous, and she was pretty much living the picture perfect life. And things were only about to get even better for her when in 2016, she married the love of her life, Chris Tam, who also happened to be the son of the founder of Tam Dai Yunnan Noodles, one of the largest soup noodle franchises in Hong Kong. Now it is important to note that even though they had a wedding ceremony, the couple were never actually legally married. But regardless, they were said to have a really happy and loving relationship and they even gave birth to two kids together. Sources describe Abby as an amazing wife and mother who also got along really well with her in-laws. Mr. and Mrs. Tam described her as being a respectful and warm person who they basically considered their own daughter. And Chris even said, and I quote, She supported me and loved me very much. And she also brought up four cute and obedient kids. But hold up, four kids? I thought she only had two kids with Chris you might be asking. Well, it turns out her marriage to Chris wasn't actually her first. Because back in 2012, when Abby was just 18 years old, she had actually married another man by the name of Alex Kwong. And the couple had had two children together before they finally divorced in 2016. Despite the divorce, however, Abby continued to maintain close contact with not just Alex and the kids, but the entire Kwong family, including Alex's older brother, Anthony Kwong, as well as his parents, Kwong Kao and Jenny Lee. In fact, to say that she was maintaining a close relationship would actually be an understatement, because what Abby was doing was she was basically financially supporting the entire Kwong family. She funded their extravagant lifestyles paid for their trips, and she also hired ex-brother-in-law Anthony Kwong, who was previously unemployed, to be her personal chauffeur. Abby and Anthony actually ended up becoming really close friends, and Anthony even made several Instagram posts where he referred to Abby as his sis. And then in 2019, Abby even went as far as to purchase a luxury apartment in Kadori Hill, which was worth around $9 million, under her ex-father-in-law Kwong Kao's name. Now, some have speculated that she did this in order to save up on stamp duty, but regardless, she allowed the Kwong family to live in this super luxurious, super nice apartment completely rent-free, which trust me, is a huge blessing, especially here in Hong Kong. But it wasn't just Abby who was super generous with the Kwongs, because it turns out her current husband Chris and his family, the Tams, also fully embraced the Kwongs. Nani? They would reportedly invite the Kwongs over to their house for the holidays, bring them on family vacations, and treated them almost like an extended family. And it was said that Chris and Abby's ex-husband Alex were even close friends. Double. Nani? 
Now, obviously, a lot of people find this super strange, and I mean, I myself can't imagine having to hang out with my significant other's ex and their family. <laughs> that must be super awkward, right? <laughs> but just bear in mind that there's still a lot we don't know about the family dynamics yet, and some people have speculated that maybe the Kwongs and the Tams already knew each other, or maybe they were business partners. I mean, we really don't know and I don't want to speculate, but all we really need to know for now is that essentially, Abby, the Kwongs and the Tams supposedly had a really amazing relationship. And because of that, Abby was able to maintain close contact with all her children, including the two kids that she had with her ex-husband Alex Kwong. Even though she no longer lived with these two kids, she still made an effort to see them as much as possible, and would invite them over to her house to play with her other kids, accompany them to Disneyland, etc. That was why it came as a huge shock when on the 21st of February, she failed to pick up one of these kids from school. Of course, everyone knew Abby as a loving and responsible parent, and she was not the type to just leave her child abandoned at school without any notice. So concerns immediately started to arise, and by the evening, Abby's mother-in-law, Mrs. Tam, had already contacted authorities and filed a missing persons report. The search for Abby immediately began, and as you might expect, the police obviously started off by talking to Abby's friends and family, which included the Tams and the Kwongs. This was when police discovered that Alex Kwong had apparently tried to stop Mrs. Tam from reporting Abby's disappearance. Additionally, when questioned, the entire Kwong family were also extremely uncooperative, and they were purposely giving conflicting statements, almost as if they were trying to throw off the search. All of this just made the police really suspicious of the Kwong family. And as it turns out, these suspicions were completely right. You see, the Kwong family were in fact a very shady bunch, with every single family member having some sort of dirt on their hands. The ex-husband Alex Kwong, for instance, was actually a fugitive who had been on the run from police since 2015, after he jumped bail on charges of theft. He was allegedly also a scammer who would go on dating apps and trick male users out of hundreds and thousands of dollars with fake gold investment schemes. Meanwhile, his older brother Anthony Kwong had a history of being sued by the banks for unpaid debts. As for his parents, his mother Jenny Lee had previously filed for bankruptcy back in 2017, while his father Kwong Kao was a former police officer who was allegedly forced to resign from his position after accusations of sexual assault. To say that the Kwong family were dodgy would honestly be an understatement. And on top of all of that, they had a motive to get rid of Abby too. Apparently, the once picture-perfect relationship between Abby and the Kwongs had soured in November of 2021, when Abby decided that she was going to sell off that Kadori Hill property that the Kwongs were living in. If you recall, the flat was technically under Kwong Kao's name. However, Abby had actually consulted a lawyer and learned that she could still legally sell the flat and receive all the proceeds as long as she could prove that she was the one who paid for the flat. And so with this in mind, Abby decided that she was going to consult the Kwongs about her plans. And being the generous person that she was, she even offered to find them a new home. However, the Kwongs absolutely refused to give up their property. And and a huge fight ensued, with Kwong Kao even going as far as to threaten Abby, allegedly saying, and I quote, If you dare sell this property, I will kill you. As we now know, Abby still went ahead and placed the property on the market anyways, and though a sale was never actually finalized, it appears that this was what sparked Kwong Kao to mastermind the horrific murder that was about to take place. Preparations began in early February, when Kwong Kao enlisted the help of his mistress, Miss Ng, mm, to help him with his plans. Yup, as if it wasn't bad enough that this man was an alleged sex offender, an ungrateful in-law, and a murderer in the making, he was also cheating on his wife. What a great human being! But okay, who was this Miss Ng mm, and what did she do? 
Well, Miss Ng、mm、is a 47-year-old masseuse who had been engaging in an extramarital affair with Kwang Kao for about six months. Coworkers claim that ever since she started dating Kwang Kao, she had begun regularly missing work and would even brag to coworkers that she now had a rich old man to take care of her. Currently, it's unclear just how much Miss Ng、mm、knew about Kwang Kao's plans. However, she did help to rent two properties, one of which was a luxury flat in Arch Sky Tower. Which would serve as a hideout for the Kwang family, while the other was a small unit in Long Mei Chun, located in the outskirts of Hong Kong. And then, throughout the next few weeks, neighbors claimed that Kwang Kao would regularly visit the Long Mei Chun property, carrying boxes and other equipment in and out of the flat. So this all brings us to the 21st of February, which was the day of the murder. That afternoon, Anthony Kwong lured Abby into his car under the guise that they were going to pick up her kid from school. At the time, this would have really seemed like nothing out of the ordinary for Abby, especially since Anthony had been her friend and driver for years, and she had no reason to suspect him. In the CCTV footage, you can even see that Abby was looking relaxed and playing with her phone just moments before she got in Anthony's seven-seater car. However, she would have likely realized that something was wrong when halfway through the journey, the vehicle abruptly stopped and ex-husband Alex Kwong suddenly boarded the car. It really is unknown what happened next, but a hole was later found in Abby's skull, and so it's believed that some sort of altercation must have taken place, and Abby was most likely struck in the head with a weapon, which was what led to her death. Following this, the car was then seen heading towards the Long Mei Chun flat, the same flat that Kwang Kao had been prepping for over three weeks, and the brothers were then seen carrying what appeared to be a heavy object into the unit. Upon hearing about all of this, police decided that it was best they check out this mysterious property at Long Mei Chun, and so on the twenty fourth of February, police finally descended on the unit, where they were about to discover what was one of the most gruesome scenes they could have ever imagined. Essentially, Kwang Kao had spent the past three weeks converting this property into what I could only describe as a body disposal workshop. The place apparently contained little to no furniture, and the bedrooms were completely empty. Instead, the place was fully equipped with things like meat grinders, electric saws, choppers, face shields, raincoats, and the walls were apparently covered with plastic linings. Inside the fridge, police found Abby's dismembered legs and feet, and on the stove, inside two industrial-sized cooking pots, was perhaps the most horrific discovery of all. Under a layer of congealed fat and oil, police found a soup that consisted of carrots, turnips, and Abby's boiled remains. 喺其中一个我哋被我哋检取咗嘅高身不锈钢汤煲里边咧，发现咗一个头颅。除咗头颅之外咧，我哋仲揾到有几条嘅肋骨、头发同埋少量人体组织喺个高身煲度。而喺另一个细煲入边咧。法醫亦都揾到少量嘅人骨，啊！依個係一個咧，大約係半米深，直徑有大約四十釐米到嘅一個不鏽鋼煲。當時俾我哋發現嗰陣時候咧，其實依個煲咧裏邊係啲液體係滿到頂嘅，即係都係全全滿嘅，可以話得成個煲係嚇。咁最高層咧係有好多層好多層啲脂肪凝固咗嘅嘅嘅液體咯，可以話得係啦，即係啫喱咁嘅形狀嘅物嘅嘅嘅物體。而亦都有好多啲湯渣啦，我都記得好似有誒紅蘿蔔、青蘿蔔等等，亦都有啲誒、呃、肉碎啦。我相信係人體組織當時嚇。And, and just to give some extra context, by the way, carrot and turnip soup is actually a common homemade soup here in Hong Kong, which just makes the whole thing all the more disgusting. But yeah, as it turns out, after the Kwong brothers had murdered Abby, they then brought her to the Long Mei Chun flat, where they systematically dismembered and cooked her remains. This revolting plan was apparently concocted by Kwong Kao because he thought that boiling the remains would prevent police from testing the DNA. After a few hours of doing this, it is believed that Alex Kwong actually left the flat sometime in the evening and headed over to the Arch Sky Tower, while Anthony Kwong remained in the Long Mei Chun flat all by himself the entire night, continuing to mince and cook the woman he once called his sis. 
Then the next morning, Kwang Kao drove over to pick up Anthony, and the two of them disposed of clothes, phones, and other evidence in the local garbage dump. They were also seen carrying what is believed to be Abby's torso and hands into their car before heading to a cemetery nearby. The Kwongs were likely planning to go back to the Longmeichun flat to continue the body disposal process over the next few days. However, they thankfully never got round to completing the act because on the 24th of February, Anthony Kwong, Kwong Kao, and Jenny Lee were all promptly arrested. Police initially couldn't find Alex Kwong. However, they soon got word that he was actually at the Tongchong Pier and was about to escape Hong Kong by speedboat. So they immediately rushed there and arrested him too. Kwong Kao and his two sons, Anthony and Alex, have since been charged with murder, while Jenny Lee has been charged with obstruction of justice, and all four are scheduled to appear in court sometime in May. Additionally, police are also looking to prosecute Alex for his theft charges from back in 2015, while Kwong Kao is currently being investigated for government housing fraud, as it was discovered that he had actually applied for government housing meant for the poor, despite already owning that luxury Kadori Hill flat. Meanwhile, other accomplices have also been arrested in relation to the murder, including Miss Ng, the mistress who helped rent the flats, Lam Sun, a freelance photographer who reportedly organized Alex's escape, and an influencer named Miss Poon, who was arrested just yesterday for also assisting with Alex's escape plans. As for Abby's missing remains, authorities are currently still trying to search landfills and cemeteries, but haven't been able to find anything yet. And that seems to be all we know for now. Overall, Abby is a woman who was well-loved by her community and was clearly willing to go above and beyond to support her friends and family. It's really a pity that she was surrounded by people as despicable as the Kwongs, who were not only greedy, entitled, and ungrateful, but even went as far as to bite the very hand that has fed them all these years. I guess it just goes to show that when it comes to some people, you can give them an inch and they'll take a mile. Either way though, at least the criminals have now been caught and I just sincerely hope that Abby's family will at least get the justice that they deserve. But yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys found this video informative and I'm really interested in hearing your thoughts on the issue. So be sure to leave them in the comments section down below. And with that said, I'll see you guys soon. Bye! Thank you for watching and special thanks to my Patreon members for supporting my channel.